The board have given me £7.3 million. And after a 10th place finish and a quarter final Europa League exit, we need to improve this team. But let's not talk about the DFB Pakal. I'll lift you one day, beautiful. We have already signed Basir Omaragic for the end of his contract. So I'm happy with improving other positions on the pitch instead. And I also want to get away from this Route 1 style of football. I was shocked to see Leipzig sacked Rose as their manager. Shocked until I seen that they finished in fifth. Unlucky. <laughs> the final of the DFB Pokal was played out by Bayern Munich and Dortmund and it was the Munich team who lifted the trophy after Serge Gnabry scored the first and Upa Meccano bagged the second. But I'm sure none of you seen that coming. And the Champions League final is to be played between Liverpool and Manchester City. Where three late goals and extra time was played in Istanbul with City winning their first ever Champions League. I have been signing players behind the scenes but this news article popped up and the legacy FM player and me really wanted to do this deal. But financially we can't really afford to spend another £13 million on one player. I also forgot that we lose our best centre back as he was only here on loan. But luckily I secured the signing of Luca Killian from Cologne a 23-year-old centre-back who's good with both feet. And with a couple of targets at left-back failing, I eventually signed Thomas Urujan, who had a relegation release clause in his contract at Schalke for just £1.7 million. Along with Hugo Vettlerson joining us in January, that's almost all of our budget gone. Unfortunately, our players just hold no value with £15 million being the most, and I really think this is a problem in Football Manager. You'll see in next week's rebuild, I have a problem with the valuation of some of my players who are on high contracts, they play really well and that yet they're like worth millions of pounds, like hardly anything is pennies. And I even tweeted out a picture of Ivan Tony being worth like 1.3 million pounds with like three years left on his deal. Once again, our first game of the season is a cup game. And as you can see, we have slightly changed the tactic and it's a more positive tactic with shorter passing. With counter press on, but not counter attacking. We won the game 7-0, but again, you can't really look too much into a cup match against a lower division side. We can look into the two games against Werder Bremen and Dortmund coming up though. Also, can they give me some easier opponents in the second round of the bloody cup that I really want to win, please? First Bundesliga match and both of my fullbacks are suspended, so that's ideal. And I was raging within minutes when Werder Bremen took the lead with only four minutes on the clock down the left-hand side. But you can't keep a tactical genius like me down and we pulled one back from a set piece. Then Derling Gonzalez did great to win the the ball back and he gave it to Jordan to score. Jordan then put us 3-1 up when he bagged from exploiting the match engine and he capped off his hat-trick on week one of the Bundesliga from the penalty spot. Dortmund must be crapping themselves. They lost to Cologne on week one and not gonna lie, the league table looks kind of upside down as Bochum sit top and Bayern and Dortmund are down the bottom. So I was confident. In fact, I stayed confident all the way up until Schlotterbeck scored their fourth goal of the game and then Adeyemi got the fifth. And his hat trick too, by the way. We also didn't score either, so it was actually a really bad day at the office. That was just a really small blip though and my confidence to absolutely batter Hoffenheim was through the roof. Right, uh, okay, minor setback, I guess. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Hey, I don't know what you were panicking for. Our press cornered them in, and Derlis Gonzalez was fantastic in finding Jordan Siabachu. Now we are back in the game, and Urujan found Thorsby, and there's Jordan once again, and we take the lead. And I'm sorry, but we are absolutely class now. Look at this goal. The turn from Jordan, the pass to Urujan, whose run was amazing, and it's 3-1. And three points for Union Berlin. And nothing is gonna stop us now. Piss off. Everything's going wrong. Everything's going wrong. Glad back next and they robbed the ball of our captain and scored. They then had a penalty, but it was saved. And second half, the momentum shifts and Jamie Llewellyn equalised through the keeper's legs. And in the 93rd minute, Jamie Llewellyn was set three to score the winner. Again through the keeper's legs. The following match three days later against Bochum, I decided to start the nutmeg master and he did it again. Nugnuts. And you will not believe what happened the second half. Just another Jamie Llewellyn nutmeg. Nugnuts. And that win leaves us just one point outside the top four, in fact. 
Let's see if Leipzig can handle us in the next round, though, before we travel to Frankfurt. Jamie Llewellyn was bored of nutmegging keepers now, so decided to outjump the whole Leipzig defence instead to score the opener. And three minutes later, Martin Thorsby wanted a piece of the pie and he smashed one into the bottom corner. This is just too easy, lads. But apparently after half-time, we were shocked to find out they wouldn't just give us the three points for dominating the first half, and Leipzig scored from a free kick. Four minutes later, they broke through and ruined my day by scoring an equaliser, and I was livid. Not as livid as I was against Frankfurt when they took the lead through this volley in the third minute, though. Thankfully, it only took us three minutes before we scored ourselves through Jamie Llewellyn. And that naughty little treacle put us ahead in the ninth minute of the game. But how did it finish, you ask? I don't really want to talk about it. We then drew to Wolfsburg 0-0, who we then faced in the next match in the second round of the cup. Are you serious right now, bro? We then played Bynes and also lost to them in the league. After we exploited the broken mechanics of the match engine against Hanover, I felt better. But then not only did they equalise, but they must have paid off our goalkeeper to let one in. Thankfully though, Jamie Llewellyn was back with another through the goalkeeper legs masterclass. Nuts. Before Jordan Siabachu bagged a winner to get us another three points. Gerald Becker then scored against Bayern Munich. Unfortunately, though, at that point, they were already three goals up and we lost 4-1. Prepare yourself, though. It's another match and it's another Jamie Llewellyn masterclass. First off, Uru Jan crosses in beautifully to find him to score the first against Leverkusen. And very similar to that, his pace over the top this time just breaks the offside trap and he bags another. And in the second half, the man bagged himself a hat-trick in style, firing in off the post 3-0 and he takes the match ball home. He of course then went missing against Freiburg, putting in a 6.3 rating. We then thought it would be hilarious to play the next game with just nine men. First off, Urujan got himself a second yellow, and then our captain Trimmel got himself sent off with a second yellow too, and he kicked right off, smashing the ball away in anger at the referee. I feel you, mate. I'm angry as well. And in our final game of the year, Llewellyn turned provider, crossing in wonderfully for Jordan to score. And in the second half, Schaefer, who probably should have crossed to be honest, he didn't, and his shot was palmed out for Jordan to score the second and final goal of the game, which Pops us into ninth place, mid-table with seven points to catch Wolfsburg in the European spots. Hugo Vettelsen has joined the club, now his contract with Bodo Glint is up and the 23-year-old midfielder brings something very different to the club. We also confirmed Terram Moffi as a future transfer for the summer. I'm looking at Terram to join Jordan up front to try and help with the goal scoring as Llewellyn and Becker can be very inconsistent. And Becker has been better from the right-hand side. Although we did also confirm a winger for the summer too, Turkish international Yunus Akgun from Galatasaray, who could play on both wings with great flair and dribbling ability. Somebody maybe to help transfer the ball further up the pitch. I also made a bid for Benjamin Henricks from Leipzig, but I'm not the only team. Dortmund has as well, so he has to make a decision between one of the greatest German teams in history or Borussia Dortmund. And then Hoffenheim too. First game of the 2024 year and it's an embarrassing loss to Werder Bremen. Henricks then joins Dortmund and rejects us. And guess who we've got next? Henricks did play and although he he played no part in the goals. Dortmund did score two and we scored zero. So I guess he gets the last laugh for now. Hoffenheim was our next opponent and belted in a deep free kick and eventually took the lead through the rebound. But we are a far superior team and Derlis Gonzalez showed his talents volleying in a shot with great technique. And we turned things around for a penalty. But in the 89th minute, Hoffenheim robbed us of two points through Christopher Lenz. Into February and we are still exploring the match engine at set pieces. But before you head to the comments section and be all Karens about it, Jordan Siabachu can score some cracking goals too, like the second one. And our high press was fantastic and we are amazing and Jamie Llewellyn scored yet again. So instead of being those Karens and going down and complaining in the comments section, why not just make sure you are subscribed? That'd be great. Let's move on from the Cologne match. We managed three shots all game. To the game we hosted Gladbach who took the lead just before half time and then they scored another just before half time. How annoying. Although we started the second half just as bad and are now 3-0 down. 81 minutes in and we get ourselves a lifeline goal but Surely not, right? 92nd minute, we are 3-1 down, and oh my god, Jordan scored. Get the ball, get the ball right now. 94th minute, we chuck everything at them, and the ball drops to Urujan, and once again, I am a tactical genius, and we have completely FM'd Gladbach. 
hilarious. And if you consider that in our next game we scored in minute one of the match, then we scored three goals in four minutes. Jamie Llewellyn also scored 12 minutes later and then 66 minutes on the clock. So we actually scored five goals in 68 minutes across two games. Leipzig scored an equaliser against us and now I dislike late goals again. I thought we were doing really well, but it turns out we're in 12th place and I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm just kidding, I'm the best manager in the world. And I proved it by exploiting the match engine to beat Frankfurt 1-0. Despite Wolfsburg dominating the statistics, we still took all three points at the Volkswagen Arena. Against Mainz, Luka Waldschmidt took the lead in the first half. Thankfully though, Jordan Siabacu is a beast and within 10 minutes left, he ran through the defence and scored. And then we took the lead two minutes later through substitute Behrens, but Mainz had the audacity to exploit the near post corners against me. How dare you? We took our frustrations out on Hanover 96 in a 2-0 win. And just like that, we are only one point behind the European spots. But because RB Leipzig lost, we got bumped up into position 8th without even playing a match. We do have Bayern Munich at home next though. And then Jamie Llewellyn scored against Bayern Munich. But again, we were already 3-0 down at the time and the goal meant absolutely nothing. We bounced ourselves back up to 8th place against Bayer Leverkusen when Jordan scored a hat-trick in a 3-2 win. Alright, we exploited the match engine again from a corner, but we also rinsed Leverkusen and Jordan is now top scorer of the league. He's joint top scorer anyway. 23 goals this season and the highest average rating in the Bundesliga. Three games left to get us into European places and our next match is a clash of 4-4-2s against Freiburg. Although Gonzalez made a fantastic run, I can't work out whether Freiburg's keeper is trash or has money on the game. He is atrocious, isn't he? Did we exploit the match engine again? Yes. But we also had a callback to last season's Route 1 football when Jordan flicked on a header for Becker to control and slot past the goalkeeper. And with Hoffenheim dropping points, we go level with them with just two games remaining. And guess who we play on the final game of the season? It's Augsburg. We've already played Hoffenheim twice. But guess who they play on the final game of the season? It's Dortmund, followed by Gladbach. And Dortmund smashed them 3-1, putting us in the driving seat with two relegation scrappers to play. Oh, you are kidding me. You're having a laugh! You're having a laugh! I don't know how this has happened, but there is five teams all fighting for one spot, all on the same points on the final day of the season. And we're all playing different teams too, and my opponent Augsburg need to win to avoid the relegation playoff. So I clicked to change my tactic just for the next match, and I made this tactic as attacking as possible, pushing players forward, being way more direct in our build-up play and up in the tempo, as well as clicking to start some counter-attacks as well. So with us having the worst goal difference we needed to score a lot if the other teams were to win and we've started really well with Jordan scoring a tap in. We of course used the broken game mechanics too. 2-0. Then with our high pressing we caught Augsburg napping and Llewellyn smashed it in off the post. What a finish. Second half and more exploiting may or may not be happening. Unfortunately that goal was cancelled by Augsburg whose player I refused to try and pronounce and scored to make it 4-1. But we got another one late on once again through great press and Jamie Llewellyn makes it five. But is it enough? You are kidding me. Goddamn, Benjamin Sesko scoring a goal that stops us from playing European football or the Augsburg goal that I refuse to pronounce. Just one more goal and we would go up a position through scoring more goals than Leipzig. <laughs> I just... I bet I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm stunned. So I'll stick the next episode up here. If it is out, make sure you enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't, because we have been given £9 million for next season.